Hello and welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. This is Season 16, Episode 5. I am your host, Dr. Brent Janogan. Today, we have someone that's truly special, someone that brings just an electric energy, Dr. Callie Corbin. She is a 2021 graduate of Life University. She is an orientation, or excuse me, she was an orientation leader while her time as a student at Life University. She was also a Life Force student ambassador, a student ambassador for Life University. She also won first place in the So You Think You Can Tick student speaking contest. That's a student driven contest for students that speak and talk tick as a student on campus. She's also spoken on stage with legends such as Dr. Guy Reekman and Jill LaMarche, many, many other amazing chiropractors in this profession. And she's also spoken at many of the Student Life Leadership Weekends. One in particular was the one that I went to that was my first introduction to Life University, and she was my orientation leader. So today she is serving the people of Columbia, South Carolina at Max Living West Columbia, where she is uh, helping and assisting as a lead chiropractor run the Max Living Healthcare Center there. Dr. Callie, thanks for being here with us tonight. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's so much fun. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. But before we jump in that conversation, let's hear from our sponsors. Every single person's why. Every single person's why. So it just had me start to think about it then. Not just why did you become a chiropractor or why you're going to school to become one, but then you have to start asking the question, why do I screen as a student? And for those of you who don't know what screening, it's going out on in the community, maybe working a vending booth or standing outside of a, a grocery store right? Why do I want to practice communicating chiropractic? Why do I want to? There are so many whys. And the number one reason I came up with on my own, no, I'm just kidding. Every mentor has always said it, but the reason why as chiropractors, we are called to say and ask why is because we are doctors of why. Um, you and I were talking about this earlier, you know, uh, the story, I think it's in the Green Book, it's chiropractic philosophy, the science and art. When uh, BJ Palmer starts telling the story of when Dr. Mayo came to his clinic with his wife, right? And his wife had been sick and, and, and uh, Dr. Mayo is, you know, brings him. And it's very obvious that he is just wanting to see chiropractic fail. Like, okay, this is my last resort. I'm going to bring my wife here. You guys have so-and-so gotten results, but whatever. But I want to cut to the end of that. And this is when Dr. Mayo has watched the whole process go by and he goes, you know, did you ever come up with a diagnosis? Like, what was your diagnosis? And he goes, I don't have one. He goes, you don't know what it is? And he goes, no. And that's when Dr. Mayo looked at BJ Palmer and said, you are very naive. You're a very naive individual. And BJ Palmer, I love his response. It's so certain what he knows and what he does. He goes, you know, see, I think you are naive of the things that I believe are important. Mm. 
just as you believe that I am naive to the things that you believe are important. The difference is you are a doc or you are a doctor of effects. You want to know the diagnosis, but I am a doctor of cause. I want to know the why. And this is why as not just chiropractors and chiropractic students, we all need to be asking, why are we doing it? Because you and I both agreed there is power in the knowing your why. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember, as you stated, I was your orientation leader. So I, I got to know you really early on and why you became a chiropractor. And I loved your story. Thank you. Thank um, and a lot of people know my why. Um, but for those who don't know, is I came to know chiropractic later in life. I was 29. I, at that point, had been hospitalized five times. And a lot of people don't know this, but these were mental health hospitalizations. And it's not like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I might be aging myself by saying that one. But these hospitals are not happy places to be. And by the time I was 29, I was on 15 medications. Hmm. And I had just been diagnosed with epilepsy and was having about 20 seizures a month. Wow. Y'all, my life was miserable. And every doctor was just saying, this is your life. Learn to cope. Because all that they were looking at were all the effects. This symptom plus this symptom equaled this equals this equation to spit out this medication. You take this med and go. They didn't care. And it's not because they don't care about me as a person. They just didn't care about why I was struggling with these things. Jump to meeting Dr. Meyer Miller out in Dallas, Texas at Restoration Dallas Chiropractic, which by the way, was 45 minutes away from my house. So never look at someone and go, oh, you're too far to come to my practice. Nope. If you have enough, if you have a big enough why, people will come. And I went to her every single day. I was, I was adjusted every single day, not a three times a week, every single day, except for Saturday and Sunday. And within one month, one month, I was off of all my medications. Wow. My doctors could not explain any of it. By month three, I remember watching a really awful documentary. I'm just going to be honest. It was awful, <laughs> really poorly done, but it was on chiropractic. It's not even on Amazon anymore. And I, but at the very end of that documentary, he says, we need more chiropractors. And I remember thinking, no one believes my story in my healing. I need to become a chiropractor. Mm. And when I went into that mindset, my why only grew. I wanted to see, I don't want one more person being admitted into a mental health hospital. I don't want one more person being told that seizures, mm, that's just your life and it's your body attacking you. You are a victim to the seizure. BS, sorry, bull crap on all level. That is your body needing to do what it needs to do in that moment. And if we can remove the subluxation in your neck, which we found out through chiropractic care there was with me, we remove that, it will diminish the seizures. How many stories, Brent, have you heard time and time again of people that were told this is your life and they get off their meds or the seizures stop or they regain hearing? How many? Oh, every, every single day. Right. And we call them miracles. No, that's expectation. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. I, 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 it, it, that's certainty. I still have seizures, Brent. I didn't go to chiropractic school because the seizures stopped. I still have them. And there are days that I still struggle with depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Then there's another day one the next day. All right, today, not so great. Tomorrow, it's another day one. I am blessed to have another day one because I got adjusted. And I can now change and reframe. But I can only do that because I have a big enough why. Right? Like, uh, going even further into this is that we have patients and i was just telling you about one right patients who are so focused on the pain so focused on their pain that they don't see the bigger picture down the line yep. but we have to go into the bay every single time and speak over them that you are in the right place getting adjusted and i know it might be causing more pain right now but i can assure you on the other side the grass is freaking greener 
And I can assure you, your body is doing what it needs to do because you don't know this, but your neck pains might still be there. But the adjustment is healing the gut that you didn't know was the issue. You just don't feel that healing yet. But we have to go in certain. We have to go in certain. You have to know your why. And if I'm being quite blunt, for you students, I love you because I was just one of them. <laughs> but some tough love, tough love time. Um, so because I had a frequency increase of seizures when I was in school, I had some little rules that I had to follow. And one was I was not allowed to drive on campus. Oh. And so I found, uh, yeah, a lot of people knew this. Sometimes they saw me running across the street in the pouring rain, right? Because I found other means. I would drive to McDonald's off of Cobb across the street, park my car at McDonald's. And before I, I got my service dog, Nellie, I'd have a bike on the back of my car. I'd unhook the bike and ride across on the campus, rain or shine. Didn't matter. Snow even at one point. Yeah. When I got, when I got Nellie, the bike couldn't happen anymore. So now it was I'm running across the street, you know, in the pouring rain, walking onto campus. It didn't matter how early, if it was dark or light or anything. The reason I'm telling this story is because at the same Simul simultaneously, I would see posts on the unofficial Facebook page for Life University of students complaining about the parking situation. Mm -hmm. Every time. Like every quarter. quarter. Every quarter. Someone wanted to bash the fact that we don't have enough parking. You know what? I had plenty of parking at McDonald's. I'm just saying the only thing <laughs> McDonald's is good for <laughs> parking. <laughs> Come park next to me and walk across the campus because if it's not if chiropractic is not worth you parking at a McDonald's and walking across the street get out of our profession I love you and I mean that with love but get out of the profession because we have enough chiropractors mm -hmm. we don't we need more chiropractors we need to be practicing chiropractic and you only can do that if you have a why I was told I could not be on campus in my second quarter. I could not be on campus unless I had someone with me at all times. And y'all know we are not paid as chiropractic students. No. I wasn't making any money. I can't pay for someone to be with me every time I was on campus. You said it. I was an orientation leader. I was part of Student Life Force at one point. I was a student ambassador, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't pay basically a nanny to be with me. And then it changes every 11 weeks? No. Right. Because you had multiple students that were your assistant that you had to have someone with you. Like you had students that actually would follow you to your classes. Yeah. And everywhere you went, you essentially had to have someone with you 24 hours yeah. bathroom. No matter what, you, everywhere you went yeah. on campus, you had to have somebody with you, correct? Absolutely. And what was brilliant about that is when they told me that I needed someone with me for my safety, rightfully so. For my safety mm -hmm. they gave me two weeks to figure it out and i developed the student companion program plan and this thing and i presented it and they said great during that time this is not a this this is a thank you to every single person that ever volunteered because not only did they show me that their why is big enough because they gave up two hours a day or like two hours a week if not more they would also have to be with someone that was having a seizure by the way, that's not super easy. That That's mentally draining and physically draining. They also, nine times out of 10, would do this multiple quarters in a row. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, every 11 weeks, I had to make sure my schedule was completely full. I could have said, is this worth it? I am 29 and then I was 30, right? Like at the time I was 30. Is this worth it? Is it worth the stress to find people to fill in every gap? And I had to ask, why am I doing this? <laughs> why am I doing this? And you know what kept me going is volunteering and going to screening events on the weekend. Really? Yes. Because you get out in the community, and this is my why as to why I screen on the weekends. You get out in the community and you ask someone, hey, do you want to get your spine checked? And you're watching them walk up to you. They mm -hmm. have this gate that they're like you know crunking on one side that's that that's a medical term by the way but they're limping on the right they have a left shoulder that's leaning down and you say hey do you want to get your spine checked and you know what they always say no i'm good 
I'm fine. And you it blows my mind. A thousand, it blows your mind, right? You're just like, are you? Are you? I bet people are, I, I don't have a spine. I don't have a spine. I'm like, uh, okay. Or do you want to get your nerves checked? Oh, I'm already on my last nerve. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, but it's not about me in those moments. It's about them. And so I will continue to ask them, even if they do a second loop, I will ask that same person, do you want to get your spine checked? And that's what kept me going because it reminded me of my why, because at one point I was that person. Mm -hmm. Make no eye contact with someone that's going to talk to me at the mall booth, right? Like right. look to the right, avoid, avoid. I only lived, when I was in Houston, Texas, I lived 0.6 miles away from another chiropractor. 0.6 miles. I was in walking distance. I actually walked past this office multiple times. And at that time, I was only on 13 medications. But I was also living with my parents, and my parents would have to put me in bed almost every night because I'd have to take my PM medication, the nighttime one, and it would create like a zombie effect and my mom would have to and my dad would have to pick me up and put me in bed i was not thriving and i was barely getting by barely getting by but i was 0.6 miles away and this is nothing against that clinic because i love that clinic i love that clinic but imagine if i had gone into my gym which was across the street from that clinic and they had been screening there one day mm -hmm. they might have and i just missed it but that is my why. Like, I don't ever want to miss a, excuse my language, but like, I don't want to miss another freaking screening event opportunity because there's another person out there that's like me. That's a big enough why to get you through chiropractic school if you're seeing that every single weekend. And the reason I also talked about the parking is that we get distracted yep. and our whys in our head become diminished. I'm distracted by the parking. The parking stinks and now I'm going to focus all my attention on parking instead of going on Saturday and screening. I'm mad. I want to meet with student government. Okay. You could take the time to develop your speech to meet with student government about the parking or you can take the time and develop a better scripting for you to meet people where they're at at a screening. I know this is tough love, but <laughs> some of you are kind of like, I'm doing it already and that's fantastic, which then you and I were talking about this again before we got on here, talking about other whys. So mm -hmm. not only your big why, why did you go to school? Why did you become a chiropractor? Why do you screen? But why do we train? Mm. Even, for the, even for the veterans that are going to listen to this or maybe are currently watching, like, why do we continuously train? Because they are worth it. Mm. It's They're preach. worth it. Preach. Right? Like, why do you train on a day one where you're sitting down and all that you're doing is asking them about their situation? Why do you train on that? That should come naturally. You're a doctor, right? No, you train on it because then you can talk about chiropractic. Transition their mind from their them on their symptom to now I'm going to give you hope that you're in the right place. I have listened to everything that you're saying and I feel it. And now I'm going to tell you how we'll find the cause of it. Hmm. But see, if we're not training that, you know what will happen is they're going to walk out going, do they even know, understand what, what I was coming in with? Right. It's like you, you okay. really have to contextualize it in a way that it's relevant. You can understand like why, the, like if it's a pain symptom, Sure, we can talk about pain symptoms and where it's coming from, the root cause, nerve roots compress. We can dive into the neurology, but not everyone wants that answer. Some people just want a solution to what they're they're going through at that current moment. It's if, you know, I'm living with this back pain. I'm living with, I can't feel my feet, my, my legs going numb. These are things that people deal with every single day. And it is a quote unquote normal for them and their mm -hmm. lifestyle. And they've adapted to that pattern. You, you know, I, when I screen, I consider I'm breaking patterns. I want to break you out of your pattern. When you're getting adjusted, we're breaking that pain pattern. We're breaking that neurological um, interference in your nervous system, that misalignment in the spine. We're realigning the spine, realigning the nervous system, removing the patterns, ultimately that are mental, emotional, psychological, physiological, and it's allowing you to express a greater um, more vital expression of life. 
Absolutely. Like when we talk about asking about the training, the training portion, if you cannot communicate chiropractic in a very layman's term, mm-hmm. right? As if you're talking to a third grader and you're explaining chiropractic, you're, I'm sorry, but you're going to have patients that come in and if they get out of pain, they leave. If they stay in pain, they're going to leave mm-hmm. because you're not creating a big enough why on them, in them, I mean, right? Right. The, oh, the, I can't tell you how many times just since I graduated, right? Like I, uh, come January will be one year of me being a fully licensed practicing chiropractor, right? Mm-hmm. How many times have I heard people go, yeah, <laughs> how many times have I heard people ask or say to me a statement, why didn't anybody tell me about this sooner? They don't understand why didn't anybody tell me it? And I told, I tell them every single time, you know why? It's because the doctors didn't have the same tools that we have. The tools that they have, they have medication Mm -hmm. and they have surgery. They can't address the root cause like we can. So why would they talk about getting to the root cause if they can't technically get to the root cause? And I don't say that all the time. It, it depends on the person, but that's an accurate statement. They, they don't know how to fix the root cause. So why would they even tell you about that? Well, I find it very... Then... <laughs> Ingo, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go. Uh, well, I just find it interesting. Like Our, our philosophies are different. Uh, in, chi- in the chiropractic textbook, Dr. Stevenson talks about the difference between science and chiropractic science. You know, science is a very inductive thought process. We're going to find something and we're going to run off of it and, you know, add to it, add to it, add to it until, you know, medication, symptom, medication, symptom, medication, symptom, cause and effect. But you, when you add and you continually add to it, you know, it's a very um, inductive thought process. Whereas when Mm -hmm. we're taking away, looking at what we started with, that's a very deductive process, looking at the root cause you're able to dive into what exactly is happening. How, how can we identify and come to the why of what's happening inside you? And I feel like as a, as a doctor of chiropractic, um, that transition to student to doctor, I didn't understand how to explain that, how to really um, have someone understand. And you can say all the big words. You can know your a and You can know all your your endocrinology and how everything works, how it's all connected. But if you can't get that out into a really nice umbrella term that people understand, that people listen to, they, they want to hear more, you know, not right. everyone wants all the information, but if you they can never want it, all the information, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, let's be honest when, when they're sitting across from you and they're coming to see you for a specific reason, whatever symptom, whatever the chief complaint, whatever and you start talking about the pathophysiological whatever with them in that first appointment, you're going to sound smart, but that's not my goal. My goal is not for me to sound smart in front of them. I want to sound certain Mm. in front of them. Right. I mean, it goes as far as um, if we're talking like student clinic or even outpatient or when you're in your peak and I have fallen under this so many times, even to this day. And I know it when I see it and I'm like, stop it. Another story within the green books, right? Is when BJ Palmer had the man come in and he got kicked by a horse. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you know, he gets kicked by the horse. His ankle is hurting now. Right. And he tells BJ Palmer, like he walks in and he's like, Oh, this is not, you want to adjust my back, mm, but it's my ankle that's hurting. Like, why aren't you looking at my ankle? Right. Like he's yeah. like, go for the ankle. You want to adjust my back. And BJ Palmer does explain the pathophysiology. Like he explains it to him, says, yeah, because when the horse kicked you, it hit this vertebra, which is affecting the nerves that go down into your leg that go into your ankle. Mm -hmm. So I need to adjust this segment. And what did the man do? He walked out. He said, no, no, that, that can't be the case. My ankle's hurting. He walked out. Could he have, and I have fallen under this, could he have gone, you're right, 
okay, let me see the ankle. I'm going to look at the ankle. I'm going to do a talus adjustment on you and I'm going to pull on the ankle. And no, instead he lets the man walk out and he tells the man on his way out, uh, what was it? He says, um, why would I even accept your money? Like if I adjust your ankle, I am stealing from you. That will do nothing for you. The issues in the low back. Right. So the man walks out. But what happens? The man comes back. What? Three months later, still an ankle problem. Mm -hmm. And he is now at the point where he's like, fine, do whatever you need to. What happens? He adjusts exactly the area that BJ said from the beginning and his ankle pain goes away. You I cannot tell me that doesn't start with BJ's why. You cannot tell me he is sitting there certain with that much certainty to go, fine, walk out. If I adjust your ankle or your elbow or your shoulder or your fill in the blank, not saying extremities aren't important, but let's be honest, the spine is where the nerves are. Mm -hmm. We start there. Why would I start with your ankle? I'm going to start with your back or your wherever it's necessary. But you can't be that certain unless you have a why. Because if you don't have a why, I'm sorry, everything else falls apart. It just, it, it naturally does. A why is your foundation. Yep. Absolutely. I was literally just about to say your why is your foundation. Like when you start to build yourself that why, it's so crucial to, to do the necessary work, ask the necessary questions to really get down to the root why of why are you doing what you're doing? You know, do you want to really do this? And then if, you, if you're chasing the materialistic values of something, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. If you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Like um, being a chiropractor truly is being a servant. You're serving people every single day. And you have to learn that it's not about you. The byproduct is the benefits that you're providing to people. It's such a beautiful conversation and such an opportunity to truly impact people and change their lives indefinitely. You know, it's it's such a beautiful, beautiful career that you you get to show up for other people every single day and really impact their life. And yes, that's a blessing. And you know, when someone talks about burnout within our profession, mm -hmm. look, I am a strong believer and I have struggled. I would say this last year has been one of the one of the hardest years because things were not turning out the way that I thought they would. Shocking how that can happen in your life. Um, but it didn't turn out the way that I thought it should or would. And I still struggle with that sometimes because I'm thinking about who? Me. You. I'm so focused on me that it, it's brought me down. And I have to literally wake up or get with a mentor and be like, okay, I know I've asked you this a thousand times, but I need to like hear it again. Hear mm -hmm. it, like get me back focused on why I came here or why I chose this route or why I became a chiropractor. Because here's the thing, when you burn out, when people talk about burnout within our profession, you do not burn out from chiropractic. You don't. Like when you're practicing chiropractic, and by the way, a lot of people don't know that acronym. I didn't, I knew nothing of chiropractic when I came to school except for my <laughs> own journey. Do you know the acronym TIC? Oh yeah. Could, could you tell our listeners what it means? Talk Talk innate chiropractic. You know, people always say like, oh, I, I'm going to talk the tick. And I'm like, that's freaking awesome. I love hearing TikToks. <laughs> like, not TikTok, the app, but like TikToks mm -hmm. all day. Fire me up. Talk innate chiropractic. Not an outside in, but an inside out, right? Speak chiropractic. When people say they've burned out on our profession, you don't stop chiropractic. What happens is you stop practicing chiropractic and you just become a chiropractor. Mm. You're no longer a chiropractor, you're just a chiropractor. Wow. And there's plenty of people that are just a chiropractor. I was at a screening just yesterday and I, I was talking to a couple and I said, hey, do you wanna get your spine tech? And she kind of looked at her husband and it was a younger couple and they're like, yeah, why not? All right. So, you know, talk to him, doing the screening thing and ended up getting them signed up. And she goes, this is really funny. I said, what? She goes, there's a chiropractor right over there. I didn't even know. There's another chiropractor here. I said, really? And she goes, yeah, he's just sitting in a chair and he he's looking at his phone. 
This is not a judgment to that chiropractor, but here's the difference. And I don't know that chiropractor, but by her telling me that, here's the difference is I want to be standing at every screening. I want to be active. I don't care if I get a thousand no's and one yes. That one yes is worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be standing actively asking, hey, do you want to get your spine checked? Oh, you want to get your nerves checked? Hey, when was the last time you got your spine checked? Hey, do you see anything familiar? on this symptom chart like i will call i will literally cat call people like oh, come over here because i can sit at home and look at my phone i don't need to go to a vending booth and sit there and waste everybody's time that's i'm sorry but that's practicing chiropractor chiropractic and being a chiropractor when you know what we know as as bj said like i think you're naive <laughs> of the things mm -hmm. that I believe are more important, right? When you believe that, when you believe that it starts in the low back, not in the ankle, right? When you understand that my adjustment stopped me seizing, not because it's like a med and it covered it up, no, but it got to the root cause. When you know that when you adjust someone and they start crying on the table, that's not because they're in pain, it's because they're finally having a brain body connection mm -hmm and whatever trauma thought process that they were actively holding on to is now being released and that's totally awesome and you understand that you don't freaking sit behind a table at a screening you stand yeah. up and you freaking talk to people i'm sorry i'm using freaking a lot because it's yeah. firing me up like that bothered me to my core well you have because they had to walk past that i'm sorry brent but like they had to walk past that table go around the booth or that around this big thing and come by me and i'm happy that i was there to be able to stop them because their first interaction with chiropractic was apparently a guy sitting behind his table right my first interaction with chiropractic people don't know this i've shared this only like one other time i was being told this is before i found dr meyer right Mm -hmm. I was told to reach out to a chiropractor at our church. Great guy. He knew me. I knew him. I knew his wife. Great man. This is not speaking to him in his character. So I want to be very clear about that. But I sent him an email. And in the email, I was like, hey, everybody's been telling me to come see you. And, and I, I don't really know why, because I don't have neck pain or back. Like, I didn't understand. But everybody's telling me, so should I come see you? And his response back to me, I'm tempted to just read it. You know what? Why not? Because <clears throat> I've held on to it mm. for a while. Um, and like I said, this is nothing against him and his character, but this is the difference between standing in front of the booth and sitting behind it. It's the difference between having a strong why and understanding and certainty in what we do and, and thinking that we're just cracking backs and putting a mic next to the, the neck so that we can get a bigger response on TikTok. Sorry, that's a whole nother talk. Bring me on that one later. But this is the, the response. Callie, thank you for reaching out. I'm encouraged by the family and friends walking with and supporting you. That is such a blessing. Based on what we know so far, remember 15 medications, 20 seizures a month, been hospitalized five times. Based on what we know so far, I don't think our office is a good fit for your situation. And we honestly don't have the capacity at this point in time to be able to provide you with the care we would want to provide you with. I trust you are in good hands with the doctors, doctors, he put in parentheses S, you were already seen. Thank you for again for reaching out. That was my first interaction with chiropractic, was that my situation was not a chiropractic case. That this, everybody telling me to go see him we're wrong. Wow. So don't, I'm sorry, but if you are a student right now and you don't know your why, go to a screening booth. If you don't know your why, go sit in on a doctor's report in a local office. If you don't know your why, that is the most important thing you could do and discover while in school. If you are a practicing chiropractor and you feel like the burnout is real and no patients are coming in, it's because we, we need to tap back into that why. Why did you ever become a chiropractor? And thirdly, ask yourself why you do anything. 
Because if it doesn't have a strong enough why, why are you doing it? Like, why are you wasting your energy on it? If there is a talk that you think you, you should do, like a, I don't know, a nutrition talk that you think you should do, but you're not, there's no why behind it, cancel it or rename it and have it just be philosophy mm-hmm. and have your patients hear you speak tick. Don't, don't think you have to do the certain things. If there's no why, it's useless and it's just a distraction. I mean, I know I'm a new chiropractor, but it is obvious. It's just obvious. Well, I love that you brought that up because um, earlier you talked about training. And when you're developing your why, you're always in a state of training. I feel like you're always training for something. And going in, being a student, going to seminars, going to screening events, going to workshops, learning different skills, different techniques, and different ways to apply chiropractic. And there's a, you know, there's a wide variety because chiropractic is an art. And that allows us to be artists and we can express our art in different ways. Some people are... Uh, better with social media. Some people are better with uh, speaking on stage. Some people are better adjusters. And how we get there is by training. And our why is what leads us to that state of training to be able to dive deep, to have the discipline to go hard in the paint and do whatever we have to to be able to show it for our patients. And it's even, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you're great. I want to dive into that conversation. But before we do, we're going to roll our ads from our amazing sponsors that allow this podcast to happen. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704-622-4089 or head to TotalClinicSolutions.com now. True Cairo, helping chiropractors explode their practices and save more lives by shifting the perception of what they do from neck and low back pain to being about the brain and nervous system, leading to increased retention, more referrals, higher case averages, but most importantly, better patient outcomes for more than just neck and back pain. For more information, Check out the link below, truecairo.org. Again, that's truecairo.org. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. And we are back. Okay. So we left off with, you you hit it on the, I always mess that up. You hit the nail on the head. But we also have to ask another why question is, why are we not? Mm. So we, we, we do a lot of why do we's, but we don't ask ourselves, especially when I was in school, like, why am I not? So what I mean by that, it's not just why am I not training? That's a, that's a very broad, th- broad term, right? I saw a lot of my friends training, but it was all the, about the adjustment. Mm-hmm. They went to every adjusting seminar. They went to every, anything that, adjusting clubs, they wanted to know all the techniques. Fantastic, Mm -hmm. fantastic. But my question is, why are you not training on the communication? Why are we not training on how to run a business? Yep. Create your own stats within Google Sheets, learn the equations, all this other business aspect that honestly, that's why chiropractors fail is that I think naively and rightfully so, so many students think that they're going to exit the practice and because they can adjust an atlas with a pinky, right? Like they, oh man, this is amazing that people are just going to line up at their door. That's just not the case. It's just not the case. Well, Some I, of, go ahead. Well, I really think the days of hanging a tile, I mean, I've heard so many older chiropractors 
say they got, they graduated from school, they hung their tile that said chiropractor, and they just waited for people to show up. And, you know, there is a nasty statistic that, you know, has followed the chiropractic profession that I think that ultimately is now a thing of the past. But 55% of chiropractors that graduate, they fell in business within five years of graduation. And, and it's not because they couldn't adjust. And it's not because you can't adjust. It really is. You, you are unable to communicate the value in which chiropractic can provide you in your daily life, how it can impact your, your mental state, your emotional state, how it can change you. You know, getting adjusted, it removes the pain patterns. It pulls all of the trauma out of the system and allows it to integrate. It's, um, I, I heard from uh, a very profound, prof profound individual. He once told me chiropractic adjustments only provide two types of things, a continuation or an initiation. You're continuing oh, healing good. or you're initiating healing. That's so good. Yeah. After, <clears throat> after every first adjustment, well, after every adjustment, we say power's on, right? But like after that first adjustment, I always let them know you are healing better now than you did when you walked through the doors. You have to understand it's not about feeling. And you have to be able to even communicate that. If I were to ask any student on, I'm going to use life because I went there, right? Like if I go on life's campus and I said, what, how do you think the world knows they're healthy? Right? Right. What are the top two answers we would get? Get your spine adjusted, I, eat right. Well, we know that, but what does society say? Society says, oh, I, I, I know I'm healthy because I feel good, mm. right? Oh, I know I, I'm healthy because I look good. And if I asked a student, a chiropractic student right now on life's campus who could probably adjust me better than anybody, who knows, right? Explain to me why that is a false understanding and in, in retrospect, dangerous to judge our health on. I don't know if they could communicate it to me without going in a very roundabout way, would you be able to communicate to me why it is dangerous to judge my health on how I feel? Mm. Can, can you tell me? Because that's ultimately what they're going to be asking you. Why don't I feel better? And Absolutely. will you be able to tell them why? That's profound because I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the capability of expressing that or asking that in, in very simple or layman's terms. Uh, as a student, you know, I had all these answers, the, oh, getting adjusted releases the endorphins and it releases the capsular ligament and restores uh, motion to the spine and all the answers, right. but like, that's not the answer that people are looking for. No, like I always judge, and I don't mean that from a judgment stance, but I just judge a great communicator can get my dad under care. Mm-hmm. A chiropractor that can communicate chiropractic can get my dad under care because guess what? My dad is a marketing guy and he is stuck in his ways. He loves his wine and his steaks and his potatoes. The man lives in West Texas. Yep. Okay. So if you can talk to my dad about chiropractic in a way that he would go, I trust you to take care of this. Mm -hmm. You in, in essence, are a great communicator for chiropractic. But I, I would I would definitely judge it off of, can you tell me why it's not about feeling? Well, I could tell you right now, right? Like, it's not about how you feel because if it was about how you feel, why is the first sign 80% of the time for people, the heart attack, mm -hmm. right? But the American Medical Association says it takes upwards to 10 years for cardiovascular disease to develop. So were you healthy? No, you just didn't feel it. Right. Why is it that we're finding cancer in stage three and four? Why do you get a pap smear or a prostate exam? It's a screening for cancer because cervical cancer has no symptoms until stage three and stage four. Right. So you, you're feeling fine, right? You have to decrease on a function scale, right? A hundred percent, perfect, accurate. Like this is the utopia of health. Zero percent, death, dead, nothing, right? Function of the body. Research showed that you had to decrease 40% of function before you feel your first symptom. Yep. 
before you feel your first symptom. So I am constantly wanting to find the people that are at 61% because they think they are just fine. But here's the thing, Brent, the reason I even did that just now is to show like the importance of being able to communicate chiropractic. If you cannot communicate why it's not about feeling or looking right, then I ask the reason why are we not training on that in school? Right? It's yeah, I, you don't, you don't get business and you don't really get the ability to communicate chiropractic as a student. Um, it's usually all about the adjustment and it's all about the science and passing your exams which is sad because i know at life and i know at other schools they do this too and i said this to the professor and i think it was uh, dr andrews i think he was the one that did this class it's in your last quarter or second to last quarter at life on campus like not in your peak but you had to just give a presentation mm -hmm. that's it that's all you had to do was give a presentation there was really no homework. Just pick a topic, talk on it. And you know what? That is the most missed opportunity for students. Absolutely. That might be the most important class on life's campus. I would say it's even more important than the philosophy class. I know. Oh, no, no. I know. Easy. I, the, the reason I say that, the reason I say that, is because we've overcomplicated a simple thing sometimes. With philosophy, know your principles. Go yep. look at them. I, I get it. I could probably get to maybe principle five in a row, maybe saying them in row, but I know the different ones, right? Mm -hmm. But then we've overcomplicated that. At least that's my, my view. Doesn't mean it's an accurate view. But what we have not taken enough of is how do you communicate? How can you move someone to action, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be able to move someone from act or into action. Yep, absolutely. Because to this day, one of the patients that, that will always stick with me, he came in for his day one, he's a truck driver, had a severe bilateral sciatica pain, severe. I mean, they are on those long rides driving it. Second, second appointment, day two, got him adjusted. He stood up crying because the pain was instantly gone. That's amazing. It's amazing. But you know what? This bothered me. It <laughs> bothered you. It bothered me for this reason. I didn't communicate chiropractic boldly enough. Mm. And so did he come back for his third appointment? Nope. No. You know why? Because he got out of pain. Why would I come back to you? you? You fixed me, Doc. Right. Those were his words. And then months later, he has now brought, uh, sent his girlfriend, referred his girlfriend in, which is great. But I have a second chance. Not every time do I get a second chance. Very true. Right? But the chiropractic, chiropractic adjustment is powerful. Our communication is even more. I, I believe that full heartedly. We wouldn't have the green books if we if they didn't communicate chiropractic in the green books, right? right. Like we wouldn't have philosophy without communication. Well, I heard a quote the other day. It was um, the chiropractic adjustment doesn't uh, it doesn't instantly feel make you feel better. It makes you instantly heal better. Yeah, and it's that's it's how you so true. Real health. It's, it's like, you know, you're, if you're out of pain, you were in pain, you're out of pain. That just means there's nerve compression. That's no longer, you know, uh, over 60%. So you have, you have upwards of 60% compression on the nervous system. You're causing pain. And as you're in that pain cycle, you're in that pain pattern. You want the pain to go away. When you're out of pain, you think you're quote unquote fixed, but you still have malfunction. You still have interference in the nervous system, the alignments and the curves of the spine, um, you know, those still need to be in proper position to truly alleviate the stress in the nervous system so it can optimally heal and function. And well, that's the true definition of health, isn't it? It's in the name of health. It's not how you feel or how you look. It's in heal. Heal. It's the body's ability to heal and adapt to the demands of the environment, not just merely the absence of disease or sickness or symptoms. Mm. It's your body's ability to heal and adapt. 
when you cannot adapt, you are sick. We experienced that in the last two years, did we not? Oh, did we? Didn't we? Did we? And now we're seeing the repercussions of not learning or teaching our bodies and putting our bodies into a position to have learned how to adapt. Instead, we masked up, put a shot in our arm and said, well, not us, but, you know, all these things. And now the outcome, we have this outbreak of RSV or yeah, RSV. Mm -hmm. Wonder why? because we are not healing or adapting to the demands of the environment anymore. Yep. That is sick. That is what sickness is. When someone has a fever, they're expressing health, not sickness. Well, principle 24, limits of adaptation, you know, the body's gonna heal itself as long as you don't break a natural law. You break a natural law, organic matter, something that's organic, you put something synthetic or non-organic in the organic organism, then of course you're going to have interference and dis-ease or dissonance in the system. You've broken a natural law of order on how things function. And so due to that, you're going to have consequences of further sickness and dis-ease. Mm -hmm. Dis-ease is, I'm sorry, but sub, not sorry, subluxation kills. And if you're in chiropractic school right now and you cannot boldly say that, Obviously, I'm not going to say that to someone out of screen, right? <laughs> but like, if you cannot bully stand by that statement, subluxation is the number one killer in the world right now. Work on your why. Hmm. I know that maybe the subluxation that I had back in, before chiropractic, right as I was meeting chiropractic, that subluxation was killing me because I was putting outside matter in. 15 medications, I artificially put to sleep, artificially woken up, artificially kept at this throughout the day. And then I had my as needed. And then I had the ulcerative colitis, you know, suppository. And then I had the anti-convulsant medications. All of these things that was keeping my body from being in a state of alignment. And I don't mean that just structurally. I mean that my brain was unable to communicate with my body. Hence, dis-ease, a melting pot of symptoms that they just threw medication at a wall to see what would stick. That subluxation was not killing me fast. It was killing me slowly. And that's the thing is that so many people call that aging, that they are okay with being killed by subluxations because they're also getting older. And they just think that's natural. Right. I hear it's that. natural to have, yeah, it's natural to have a big Ziploc baggie when I go through TSA at the airport because I'm, I'm 65, I'm supposed to be on this many meds. No, <laughs> no, that is a lie that you have been fed and that is a subluxation that you're putting into your body that was already subluxated and it's going to kill you sooner. I'm sorry, subluxation takes years off of your life. It absolutely it just does. It does. Um, you know, you reminded me of something, talking about the principles, the character of universal forces, principle 11. Uh, the forces of universal intelligence are manifested by physical laws, are unswerving and unadapted, and have no solicitude for structures in which they work. Essentially, your nervous, your intelligence that drives your system is it, its job is to keep you alive. Like that is its goal. And putting all these medications in, not eating properly, not exercising, um, using toxins, you know, flooding our skin, our our biological system. Um, washing your clothes with um, uh, dryer Bleaching. dryer sheets, yeah. massive estrogenic effects. You're loading yourself yourself with estrogens. Removing these toxins in our daily environment allows us to ultimately be able to be more organic, allow us to be able to heal, allow us to be able to function properly. Getting our spine adjusted allows us to remove the interference, find alignment structurally as well as physiologically allowing the brain to communicate to the body and the body to communicate to the brain, safety pin cycle, afferent, efferent communication. It's all connected. It's all part of the conversation. People, you don't, you don't get older and have to take medication because you're quote unquote diagnosed with something that's not normal. Or it's not hereditary. We're not, com we're not computers that you're, these are the cards that you were dealt. No, epigenetics has debunked the fact that 
were not just these preset computers that if mom and dad had this, you are destined to have this. No, the reason why mom and dad have this and you now have this is because they taught you a lifestyle that induced that. Yep. Type two diabetes was never called type two diabetes. It was lifestyle induced diabetes. Lifestyle induced. If it's something that's induced, guess what? We can reverse. Yes, absolutely. But they changed it for multiple reasons. One is they didn't want to accept that it was lifestyle. And two, younger and younger kids were getting it. Well, how can a lifestyle of an eight-year-old cause type 2 diabetes? Well, as a former third grade and fourth grade teacher in a, in a uh, uh, low-income school, right, a, a Title I school, loved my kids to death. But they, for lunch, ate Takis, which are, you know, the chips. Oh, yeah. They would bring in a big bag of Takis for their lunch. They would come in with the McDonald's breakfast. This is not a judgment. But I had younger and younger girls were, who were starting their period in third grade because hormonally they were out of whack. Yep. I'm mentioning all this because we have just settled for this idea that we are trapped in the body that we're given and there's nothing I can do about it, so I must take this medication. That is my lifeline. No. And I know we've started talking about this and everything, but pulling it all back, it just goes back to whys. Learn yep. your why. Why do you train? Why do you screen? Why do you talk to people about chiropractic? And, and you know, to be honest, I'm a Christian first. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ who came and saved me, a awful sinner. <laughs> okay. Thank goodness. And every day I, I want to walk in alignment with him. Mm -hmm. But he in God, right? That God, they created our bodies to heal. So I talk about chiropractic. And at the same time, I tell them that I have limitations. Talking about limitations of matter. I have limitations, but he has no limitations. I have limitations. He doesn't. So just because you have arthritis or you have something that you do believe that it was hereditary and was passed down, he can heal you as long as there's no interference in that body. Right? I can't promise anything. We don't, Brent, we don't treat anything. Nope. I do not treat. We I don't, don't treat treatment. anything. Nope. I always love nope. when Here. people sit down in our consult room and we have a poster that has all the uh, all the nerves that are exiting and, and then it has different symptoms that or different things that could go wrong if they're impinged, you know, or, or there's pressure. Yeah, my system chart essentially. Yeah, in a sense, but it's a little bit more uh, detailed. Yeah. And someone, I'll talk to them in, in that day one consult, I've got to their chief complaint, whatever it was, and I went through the nervous system and then they'll sit there and I'll watch him and they'll look at that poster and then they'll go, this can help with sleep? Mm -hmm. or, or this can help with kidney. How, how would that, I could sit there and talk about all the hormones and all the whatever. No, for the same reason that it's going to help with your headaches. Because when we start removing pressure on the nerves in that region, it's amazing how your body is going to start healing. It absolutely is. And it's such a simple concept that people need to understand. We've overcomplicated it. We have. We just have to learn how to do it. We really have. And in, in I want to I want to end on that note because that really is the the conversation being able to communicate chiropractic to the layperson but also having all the context behind it to reinforce and to back it up. Uh Dr. Kelly, where can people find you and hear from you and and if they have questions Absolutely. for you, how can they get a hold of you? Well, first, if you are a student at Sherman or Life or anywhere, come hang out in the office. We're we're all of 45 minutes away from Sherman. We're all of, what, three, four hours away from Life University. Come to our practice, spend a day. I don't care, I have couches. You can sleep on my couch, I don't care. Come visit, observe the practice, sit in on doctor's reports. I'm at Max Living West Columbia. Um, it's right close to downtown and uh, University of South Carolina. We have multiple offices, so you could spend a full week here. We'd, we'd love it. The other is you can find me on Instagram, Constantly posting Dr. Kelly DC. Um, find me on Facebook. I'm I'm really intimidating. So um, no, you can reach out um, if you need my number. Just Facebook private message me, and I'll I'll send you my 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 cell phone number, and we can talk. 
Awesome. Thank you for so much for being here. Thank you for pouring into us. And thank you for just this conversation, because this is a conversation that I really felt like a lot of students needed to hear. Um, learning to learning to train, learning to ask, why am I doing this? Finding their why, finding that foundation, ultimately giving themselves the ability, the permission, as well as um, finding out where their weaknesses are so they can ask. <clears throat> was, I love how you put um why do we do something and why do we not do something? That's profound. Uh, I would love for everyone to connect to you. Make sure they connect to you. Reach out to her, y'all. She is amazing. She was my orientation leader uh, when I came into Life University. So we're we're longtime friends. She's one of my longtime, longtime friends, but also I look up to her. She's an amazing human being all around as well as amazing chiropractor. Dr. Kelly, I just want to say one more time, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you. This was fun. <laughs> it really was. It really was. We'll definitely have you back on. Awesome. Look forward to it. Awesome. Have a great night. We will catch you later. All right. Bye. Light and love, y'all. We're out.